I would like to share my opinion on scaled frameworks in general, and more specifically on SAFE, that amplifies many of the weaknesses of scaled frameworks. And I would like to do that following the spirit of the Lean and Agile community, that is to respectfully challenge new ideas in order to improve them and suggest better alternatives where available. In order to do that, I will comment a few practices and highlight some of the underlying problems that they reveal. Let's start with safe implementation roadmap. A roadmap for agile adoption and transformation. This roadmap has the same starting point and the end point and the same sequence of steps for every organization and ignores each company's unique context and circumstances. This roadmap also have an endpoint and a target operating model completely defined up front following a traditional approach like in waterfall programs. Having such a waterfall program for an agile adoption or transformation is not unique to SAFE. Consultants and consultancy firms that are inexperienced with Agile often make exactly the same mistake. But what is the problem here? Think about your own experience, where you have seen something that worked perfectly in one organization and failed miserably in another organization. Or think about things that didn't work in one organization and work it well in the next one. Also, complexity science, chaos theory, and the butterfly effect suggest that even small changes in the initial conditions can have huge impacts. But this is not reflected in this implementation roadmap. The agile approach instead is coherent with the John Gall principle, and it is to start small, make it work in the small first, and then continue to scale the adoption of Agile with experimentations, learning, adapting, and evolving. And the next step in the journey of Agile adoption unfold and reveal itself as you go. When you look at safe implementation roadmap instead, we see the implicit assumption under, underpinning the transformation roadmap. That is against the mindset and the core philo philosophies of Agile. The next practice that I would like to talk about is safe budget and portfolio management. SAFE adopt potentially interesting practices coming from Lean. Not the most interesting from the Lean and Agile community, but still good practices. The problem lies with the other elements of SAFE that preclude budgeting and portfolio practices from working as intended. For example, think about extremely prescriptive approach to processes that prevent the experimental mindset in SAFE, or think about the top-down nature and the planning execution separation in SAFE that prevent cross-functional collaboration, or rigid structures and role in SAFE that prevent the ability to quickly adapt and respond to changes. As a consequence, SAFE leaves the organization dealing with budgeting and portfolio with the very political approach that we all know too well, where everyone is trying to protect their own budget and headcount, regardless of what is good at the time for the company. And so companies adopting SAFE end up with the structure, processes, and roles that prevent rapid change and the ability to react quickly 
to changes, they end up with an increase in the centralization of power and with a focus on costs instead of outcomes and value creation. And those companies end up with the focus of and with an incentives to increase the work in progress in order to justify the budget. In a similar way, they also end up with time consuming activities to create forecasts that justify the budget requested. We mentioned roles. Let's now have a look at a case studies about uh, roles in a SAFE. SAFE in the org chart had new levels of managers as a consequence of its approach to roles. Look, for example, at the product owner in SAFE that is uh, uh, decomposed or split in a more different roles and more different layers in the org chart. The original product owner in SAFE is disempowered. Is her own responsibility is limited to guide the implementation of predefined user stories. The vision of the products, the responsibility of delighting the customers and being profitable is taken away from the product owners and the team. And there is no experimentation, only following instruction. That is what uh, the safe product owner is left with. Let's have a look now at uh, agile release trains in SAFE. On some degree, every scaled agile frameworks in, implicitly assume a set of context and circumstances. And if the company adopting that framework doesn't match uh, those contexts and circumstances, the scaled agile framework will be deleterious to the company. And this problem is not specific of a safe, it is common to all the scaled agile framework. After all, this is why agile focus on experimenting and adapting your own way of working, starting from an intentionally incomplete lightweight framework in order to avoid those problems. Look, for example, at the Agile release train practice. If in your company you have a group of teams that are working on a monolith application or a product that have a long and complex manual last mile user acceptance testing and a complex and manual deploy, Agile release train may help to synchronize all those teams and work better together. But if in the same organization, there are other teams that are in a better place and on some degree they are pursuing DevOps and continuous delivery, prescribing agile release train to everyone in the companies as SAFE does, it can be and it is very detrimental. In the last 20 years, there has been a continuous effort to remove bottlenecks in software development caused by the need for synchronization and serialization of activities. Think, for example, about the introduction of version control systems or source code repositories in order to enable multiple asynchronous changes to the same source code by different developers and teams. Or think about continuous integration to enable uh, multiple developers and teams to run the product build its integration and the automated testing. Or think about continuous delivery and DevOps to enable multiple teams to release asynchronously different parts of the same system. All those advanced techniques are much superior to agile release train practices, that it is an outdated technology practice instead.
Now let's have a look at safe epics and more in general safe requirements model. On a different degrees, different scaled framework introduce new structures and new roles. They are the most visible aspects after all, just like the umbrella in your cocktail drink. But they are also the less relevant aspect and in the scaled framework, those aspects can easily become detrimental. Let's see how it pan out with the safe epics and safe requirements model. The safe requirement model and its hierarchical structure mimic the introduction of more levels of management in the organization chart and mimic the disempowerment of the teams and the product owner. Safe indeed redefine the epics, bringing back gun charts and work breakdown structure in disguise. It encourages again heavyweight requirements and support and overs of a requirement and the use of a requirements as contracts. This means that the safe requirements approach brings us right back to the old school of heavyweight requirements and hands over that predate agile. Another practice worth mentioning and considering is safety eye planning. For those coming from traditional approaches, safety eye planning brings a moment of collaboration across teams. And this is a positive comment mentioned by many of the attendees. But PI planning is also one of the practices that are a second or third best choice. Indeed, there are other practices from the Lean and the Agile community that are far better, more effective and superior to PI planning. Think, for example, about Lean Inception and the Google Design Sprint, but there are also many other practices. The PI planning highlights two of the biggest mismatch between safe and agile. That is one of the reasons why I want to talk about safe PI planning. The first mismatch has to do with business sponsors and senior product people that do not attend the PA planning. When the PA planning starts, their decision has already been taken, typically in a top-down fashion, without the involvement of the teams on the ground. This limits or prevents business and technology collaboration instead of promoting it as Agile does. And even if business sponsor and senior product people want to listen to inputs from the teams, the impact of those feedback will be delayed until the next quarter or the next PI planning. The second big mismatch between safe and Agile has to do with the dependencies between teams. Safe and safe practices like PI planning accommodate existing dependencies instead of removing them. During the 90s and before Agile, there are several chaos reports from the Standish group that shows how Delivery initiative that involve a large number of teams that have several dependencies have a high rates of failure. And indeed, this is a problem that Agile tackled, a central problem that Agile tackled with the vast literature and a lot of different practices. For example, Agile shaped teams in order to increase the ability of each team to release end-to-end -end features and products autonomously. Technical excellence in Agile focus on improving 
the code base and the architecture to reduce dependencies and to relax the remaining ones. An agile focus in aligning teams with products and the underlying architecture as per the Conway law, again, in order to minimize dependencies. All those progresses in Agile are ignored by SAFE, while SAFE instead go back to the old school of program management that predate Agile, bringing us back 20 years ago, with approaches that we have seen failing again and again. The last thing that I would like to consider is the body of knowledge of SAFE together with its manual. This body of knowledge and the huge manual reflect a fundamental lack of simplicity. That is true, especially for all the heavy weight scaled framework like SAFE and Disciplined Agile, but on some degree is true also for all the other scaled Agile frameworks. What I'm doing here is questioning the whole idea that scaled Agile frameworks are Agile at all, starting first from the heavy weight one like SAFE and DEAD, but also thinking about all the others. When we look at the SAFE manual that is more than 500 pages, what we find is a content of practices that is coming primarily from the Lean and Agile community, but a content that is two or three years old why the Lean and Agile community instead is constantly experimenting, evolving, inventing, and innovating. So when you need inspiration about how to scale, or when you need to solve a specific problem while you are scaling, why should you reflect to such outdated heavyweight manual? It is far better to go directly to the Lean and Agile community in order to find inspirations.